Hi, welcome to another episode of the Nitty Digit Podcast. I am your host, Jay, aka Jennifer, aka Don't Call Me Late for Dinner. Ha ha! Hi guys. Um, look, I'm recording every other week. Yay! <laughs> oh, I really would like to do every week, but um, things are kind of up in the air still with things so but at least it's every other week now <laughs> anyway if you are new welcome I'm so glad you found me um, if you're returning thank you so much for coming back I know there's a lot of podcasts and I know there's only so much time in the day and usually it should be done knitting with other things but I'm glad you came back all right, I don't have anything off the needles. I know, it's crazy. I can't believe it. You know, you would think that I would have something off the needles, but I don't. But I am working on my projects. So first off, in my slip stitch studios bag, I am doing the 198 yards of heaven. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. And I did one cable repeat, not excuse me, not cable, a uh, chart repeat. And I'm starting on the second one. So it's, I'm liking how it's turning out. I know it's very busy with the uh, with the color with the variegated colors, but I'm really liking it. I, I, the colors are kind of very. I can't really see. It's actually more mute than what the camera is showing, but I like it. And as you notice, the lighting is very different. I'm trying to, we we have this now, so I don't know if I really need the one up front, but we'll see. We'll see. But so I'm just working away on that. This I have not touched it since that Sunday, or you know I may have touched a little bit that week, and then I haven't touched it since. Maybe I'll knit some of it while I'm watching Eureka. Because I'm caught up on Hannibal now. And I'm just finishing up. I'm, I'm getting close to the end of season three of Eureka. Um, oh, and by the way, Teddy's napping on the bed. So, she, she does not want to appear. She's cranky. Little miss. I'm Vampire Kitty! That's all I hear at the night, huh? Ah. Yes, that's right. She's ignoring me just like I ignore her. Anyway, the dirty details is, again, the pattern is 198 yards of heaven. Free Ravelry pattern. Check it out. The yarn is Blue Moon Fiber Art Silky Socks That Rock in the I Heart, I Mad Heart You? I have the tag. Hello. First, haw yarn. Then, haw, oh, here's the tag. I mad heart you. You. There you go. And this is, what size needle? I think it's an eight, US eight, but let me look at the needle. Look, 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 look. Yep, US eight. Which is five millimeter on my high. I'm knitting it on my high and high sharps. So look at it again. It's so party. It's only supposed to be a kerchief, so it's not going to be too big. So I may have enough yarn to do something else with the silky. We'll see. All right, let's shove this in the bag. This is my TV knitting. Uh, my second knitting, which is, has become a travel knitting, is this one is in my needle runs through it. Super superhero heroines, yeah. And I thought I would have more, um, more done on this, but I. 
well, as you will find out and etc. 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 I've been uh going through a lot this past week. This week in general. Like I've done I've done a good amount of work last week. So that's so if you'll look. It's still doing the seed stitch now after doing that weird so oh by the way, this is the Sala cow, which is um on netty.com and it's also can be found on Ravelry. I was doing the increases the last time. Now I'm on the I'm a few rows into the body, so now I'm just keeping the uh, this. So I'm not. It says it says to go until the left side measures 17 inches, but I don't know which left side are they talking about. Left side from the right side or left side from row one? I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'm going to measure it before I do anything else. So. And. Uh, these are done in US 5s and US 10s. And I'm using my Knitter's Pride. 3.75 millimeter US 5s. Knitter's Pride. And I'm using my signature 10 needles. I think these are the fixed ones. Because you al alternate between rows. Okay. And I'm, this has been my traveling lately. And sometimes I have been getting weird stares, and other times, like, oh, even knitting. Nah. You don't get that many curious people on, on the bus, which is fine by me. Because you always get those. I mean, it's sweet. People are like, oh, I love, your knitting is so pretty. And it's like, thank you. And then they start talking. It's like, did you not see the earbuds in my ears? I didn't want to talk. I mean, I don't know. There's just only so much talking that I can deal with. That's just me. Anyway, this is done in socks, Blue Moon Socks at Rock in the Cozy, Fierce, and Dirty Orange. Socks at Rock Lightweight. I believe you can see it. There you go. So that's actually all that I've been knitting. Uh, as I said, I just, you know, I was telling someone, stress is, knitting is a great stress relief. But for some odd reason, I've just been so stressed that I don't, I, I, I don't have, I don't have the spoons to knit. I just don't have the energy. <laughs> I'll be. It's just it's it's been. Um, it's just been it's been really stressful, and I'll tell you more later. But you don't want to hear about that just yet. You want to hear about my nails. What is on my nails? So I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna kind of merge the parade and my nails because I used a lot of my new stuff that I got and I, I really don't have any new books to tell you about only um, I'm reading Good Omens by Neil Patchen Neil <laughs> Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett that's it that's all that's all I have to talk about in books voila books is done <laughs> nails on the other hand so I have right now I have on Paulette, which is my boho glam. So this is part of the julep. No, you can't see it. There you go. Um, this is part of the May, April, May, May, May box. And this was one of their, this, they review they didn't reveal the colors but they revealed the add-on for this box because if you don't if you if you're not familiar with julep julep is a seattle washington based company nail polish company that also deals with makeup and blah 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 and if you're a maven you get a monthly box um with a choice of two colors and an add-on makeup whatever tool that they have 
you know, it, it, it's, it's actually a pretty great deal. Sometimes you can switch and you're, you're given, you're, you take a quiz and you are given a style. And um, I'm Boho Glam. Sometimes you can switch styles of say, what, if your style has really god awful colors and you really don't, you really like, say, classic, classic beauty or classic with a twist or something like that. Whatever style, if you decide, oh, I really like that style better, you choose that style. Or you can choose to go with just polish. Um, if you really like the collection and you just want the polish, you don't you don't want the add-ons. You can order all of the polish collection without the add-on. You, if you like the whole entire collection, including the add-on, you can buy that, and it's actually really inexpensive. Um, so I got my style this month, um, and the add-on was <coughs> excuse me, Whew, dusty. Um, so the add-on was something that they revealed four months ago because they needed, a, they started a Kickstarter project so they could have enough money to make these. It's called the Ply Wand. I was kind of, I, I actually was really skeptical about this and I, I got it anyway just because I'm curious, but, because, and honestly, I didn't really want the whole entire Paula's collection. Um, I wasn't interested in all of the colors. I actually really like the Boho Glam colors. So I figured I'm not paying extra for my for the ply one, so I got it. And I got extra caps because they have so usually you you get this and then you can pull this out and it has a round round cap. Well the round cap is now an insert for the ply one magnet. And uh, if you want to see, so it comes with its own. As you can see, I use this. I it was late at night last night when I did, when I did my, when I did my nails, and so I thought you had to take out the whole entire brush rather than just connecting it to the brush. Don't ask me. These I can use for other nail polishes in general. So. Um, so, and it comes with its own. I, I tried pulling it out. <laughs> I was able to do it earlier, but not before. So, you want to see? So, as you can see, you can, it's a magnet. Ta da! And, Twist it. Now if I can twist it, damn. There you go. Excuse my language, darn. I'm trying to be better about my swearing. So you can see. Ta-da. I used a lot of it. So they have a shorter, see how it's shorter? The the shorter stem. So oh no, you can't see. Ta-da! So it is shorter, so you can have better, better work. And actually, I really didn't know. I didn't notice the difference. And so, excuse me. How you use it is you in your dominant hand. In your dominant hand, when you you hold it like a pen, pen, or a pencil, and you just foof, 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 And actually, I really liked it. I mean, I didn't notice anything different than any other. What I noticed differently was, I lost the brush, at least it wasn't the polish brush, is when I, they suggested when I go to my non-dominant hand, I do this. Now if I can twist it, there you go. You hold it like, you, you bend it, you bend it like this, you angle it. So how do you angle it? <laughs> I'm still getting used to it. So you kind of twist it. So it's like an elbow. So you kind of hold it like a pencil here. And then you can do, you know, foof, foof, foof. So it's supposed to be better control for your non dominant hand. And actually, I felt a little bit more comfortable with this, especially with their long stem. I had the shorter stem, 
but I think this is going to be great for when I use it, use it for their regular, you know, for, 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 for you know, so I was pretty impressed. I mean, I don't, I honestly don't think I'm going to use it as much. I think it would be fun to use when I'm doing my toes because I have a harder control doing my toes. Oh. Which I don't have. I'll pull it. Hey, Teddy, you want to grab the nail polish for me? She is such a little diva. Mm. So, yeah, that's what I did last night. So I have on Pauli, Paulette, which is this nice light, and you can't really see it, but it's kind of it has a pearl finish. It's not. I mean, again, I I always do clean up for my nails, so it's not. I mean, I just didn't have to do that much cleanup. And I did my usual HK girl top coat, not the NYC Grand Central Station, because I want to use up the, I just want to use that one up before, I mean, I really should use the cheaper one, because I heard it does get glumpy after a while, but, eh. and I gave away my Butter London to someone, who, to a, to a TFIMP gal that wanted it. I'm giving away my Julep Freedom Polymer because I, I bought that because um, I was doing my testing and I don't don't really like it. Just I used it for my toes and I still don't like it. It just meh. so I'm I'm giving that I'm mailing that off to another TFIMP girl and I'm actually kind of starting to look through my nail polish and say I don't really like these so I'm I'm gonna do a D stash because. I think I have too much. No, really? I ha actually have a way, way more julep collection, so I'm keeping those, though, because I'm possessive of my juleps. Oh, don't be a diva. So, that's Paulette. I'm actually really happy about that. I'm sorry, one moment. Ugh. So, yeah. Uh, I also, I have on my toes right now, Butter London HRH. I splurged a little on myself. Not, not really knowing what was going to happen to me on Tuesday. I just wanted to splurge. I just, I wanted to splurge and... And, and have a good pedicure done on done on me because I just I wasn't liking my knee on and I was very upset about the fact that I can't I still can't do my nails right. I'm impatient and I also really wanted to get some of my I didn't get enough of the cuticle out from my sidewalls of my big toe. So I went and got those done. And if you want to see, <laughs> if you can see, it's a nice deep purple shade. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and I made them use my HK Girl. And it's so shiny and pretty. So, that is what is on my nails. Before that, I had, I was still doing the gel. I still love my gel. Um, I just, I'm putting on regular nail polish right now. Because, <laughs> again, that's going to be an et cetera, et cetera. But I, I have to switch over to regular nail polish um, for a while because of circumstances. And I'll, again, tell you later. But before, not jumping ahead, before I got, I had on Indian Sorry which is something that I got through Amazon. It's IBD Gel Polish. If you remember, I have their top coat, which someone suggested to me, and I love it. So, And I found out that although they're not prime, they're still really inexpensive for gel polish. And this was so much fun to wear. I loved it. 
I loved it so much. I was actually pretty, I don't want to take it off, but I have to because it's not, it's not appropriate to wear when you're interviewing. So this is a much nicer, lighter polish that no one will notice. Well, this one is was darker. And I have pictures of that. I'm still learning how to um, polish with gel because it is a little bit different. In re in, it is definitely different than regular polish because it is a, it's a thicker, um, has a viscosity, has definitely high viscosity, um, and you definitely want to clean a lot before you set it before you cure it so it takes me a little bit longer because I'm a little bit more careful but I'm curious to see if I could use the ply wand on the gels but worth the try right so this is another part of the parade because I got this before after I, I podcast um I got this using Amazon and I got a gift card for our administrative staff day. So, thank you, firm. You'll find out why I'm smiling like this later. Um, before that, I had, and before that, that was, that was a good, I polished that on Tuesday. So, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So, a good five days. Um, it lasted really well. Um, before that, I had Rock My Emerald, which was for Sunday. I polished this on Friday night. So this actually lasted a little bit less. because I, I This was the only time I checked my nails. The only time I picked my nails was with this on Monday. And I don't know why. I guess green polish I'd pick off more. I don't know. But I, I wore green for for the professor for his birthday on Sunday. I cooked a lot on his birthday. And um, we had a couple people over. It was pretty simple. Um, but I cooked good food. So I rock, rock my emerald. It was really nice. This was, I think I did a really good job on that one. And then before that, um, I had an interview with a staffing agency. Um, so I, I knew that, and I forget when I did that. I know I had this on for a good, good five to seven days. Yeah, a good five to seven days. I got, I have ne I had Never Too Gray by Jellish Mini. And that was, a, that I did well on that. I, this one I was very proud because Jellish has a reputation of shrinking back. Um, and I was able to get it to not shrink back as much or not at all. So... I was pretty happy about that. And I have pictures. I have pictures. Oh, sorry. My scalp is itchy. But I had this on. Again, I'll have pictures at the end of this. So I had that. And then I think that was it. I think I before that I had the Jelly Sherbert. So there you go. I couldn't. Oh, you know what I had it on? Tuesday. I painted it. I pa painted the the never too gray on Tuesday because I had my friend Allie over and I was taking off the jelly sherbet right there and then because I said I can't have hot pink for my interview on Friday and she's like you can't I'm like no you don't want to have hot pink nails I mean there's it's controversy but there is controversy but you really just don't want to have nail polish that you don't really want to have nail art you really don't want to have anything sparkly which is really hard if you want to sparkle, but you want to look professional. So, more conservative. That This is all my opinion. So, but yeah, that was, was that is what's on my nails. I also got in the mail, I got a shipment of Jamberry, which I'm going to experiment more. These, I have to wait, because again, I'm going through the, the, going through the interviews but my friend awesome awesome friend who's a jamboree associate gave me some samples she gave me a junior samples with the hearts if you can kind of see the hearts 
these are juniors so she said since i have very small nails maybe these would be better for me which is fine by me and then she also gave me another sample fun purpley samples i'm really excited about this one if i could pull this one off to an interview i would i'm hoping i don't have to do any more interviews <sighs> Wouldn't that be cool to go in like this with this leopard print? Oh my god. I wish. These are samples. She's my friend's awesome. I could probably get away with the black and white stripes. But um, and then I got some or purple purple orchids, which is in the Pantone color of the week of the year. And then these are for Comic Con in July. These are the comics. So these are special. She actually kept these aside for me because she's awesome. So uh, I got these and that is, these are going to be a while. <laughs> I'm not going to be getting these for a while. Um, and then I got my, and then I got my Maven box. So let me show you the rest. So they gave great instructions on how to clean it. Um, Mm, yeah. so, so that's that and then they, they like to give you now coupons but if it's not the coupons that you want so this is the best color in the whole world is the one that looks good on you Coco Chanel I like that purple though alright so this the collection is called Fresh Twist you know, so let's see. So I got, as I said, I got extra precision brushes and the caps. Um, and here's more. I got ten. <laughs> I know. I got ten. I just, I wasn't sure, so I got 10. They're the brushes and the caps, so, but it looks like I can take these out. I don't know. Some of these I can, some of these look like they're really in. And then the second color, so you already saw a palette. There you go. Let me show you the second one. Let me show you the second one. This is called Jean. This is a nice blue. If you can see. As I said, the lighting. I'm learning. Oh, there you go. It's a nice baby blue, which, like a Tiffany springy light blue which I'm really I, I've been kind of craving to put on my nails but I if I don't know if it will be if it'll be noticed you know with my darks with my kind of olivey pink skin so I'm not sure so once once I figure out things I can wear my light blues because I also got if you remember I got the four Audrey delays which I really want to wear but I don't know if it's if it's internet interview approved so I'm excited so yeah oh I also got using my Amazon gift card don't give me that look hey while I'm sleeping, you meow like crazy. Cranky kid. I got a new lamp. This, you can fit your whole hand in. I'm still trying to figure out the placement. Because I've been putting it too far in, and it hasn't been curing a lot. But if you do it just right. Yeah. And then you can choose 30 minutes. 90 seconds, 60 seconds, and 30 seconds, which is perfect if you have different colors. And these and this actually cures shellac. So I can buy some CNB um, UV gel. 
so I'm so excited and it fits my foot so if I really really want to do a gel pedicure which I don't know why you would I mean my pedicures tend to last longer if I go to a salon mine don't last that long I don't know why but you know I'm so excited. I've used it already, as you know. And I love it. I love it so good. Anyway. Yeah, I know I did the rock the emerald on Friday because I want I also got my lamp on Friday, so I'm like, what color can I put on? And the professor's like, You just put on the gray. Like I've had the gray on for five days. I can move. What do you want? He's like, green. I'm like, oh. I'm, ex I'm very excited about that purchase. Very excited. So, all right, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What have I been hinting for the past 31 minutes? Well, you all know that I've been looking for a job because I, I'm trying, I was trying to become a librarian, trying to, you know, be happier about my job situation and whatnot. Well, the universe has, the universe was tired of my crying, crying and whining and complaining and said, ha, 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 look, and I got laid off on Tuesday. Um, it's been really hard. It, it wasn't fault of my own, surprisingly enough. Um, it, it, a lot of drama was going on in the, in the firm. I can't say much else, but basically it just makes sense that this happened. Um, so this is the universe kicking me in the butt to say, come on, what do you want to do? So I have been toying with the idea of not, even though I have a master's in library and information science, of using it for more than just being a traditional librarian. Now, a lot of people then go on to, to, to the tech industry, which that is fine, but I'm not, I didn't focus on that in my studies. I focused more on research. I focused more on the public service part of library and information science, um, the traditional librarian role, because uh, a librarian is not just someone that organizes and catalogs and is the person that knows everything apparently. It's they I really don't know everything. <laughs> I look it up, I research. Um that that's the thing about reference librarians that people don't know is we don't know everything. We know how to find it, but we don't know everything. Um, but the other thing that librarians do is they really work with the community, specifically public librarians. Academic librarians are, they, they focus more on the students and focus more on how to teach the students how to research more, which I wanted to do. Really, I really wanted to do that, but I found that my mentality and not my mentality, but it didn't fit the needs that I you know the phrase, you can't always get what you want, but you do get what you need? Well, that, you know, <laughs> it's a Rolling Stone song. Um, I wanted to be an academic. I love learning. I love being a scholar. But my personality, my, my, my needs as a human being requires my requires me to be surrounded by people uh, being able to help people being able to um, assist people in a sense and you don't get that in an academic library you you, you really focus on the academics you know the scholarly pursuit and I'm more of a public service I really am and the thing is is that it's you know sit public libraries are 
our government, their city, their county, their, and um, it takes a long time for them to hire, which would have been fine if I had a job, which was what I was doing. Um, now that I don't have a job, it, it's, it's harder for me to wait for those, you know, and I, I have applied to those anyway. And, and the other, the other thing is anyway, when I was applying to them, they kept saying, you don't work at a library. And I'm like, that's the whole point. You know, this, the library field is especially difficult because a lot of the times it really is either an epistic society where you've been born in the library out of the womb or you've started out as a library clerk when you were in high school, continued going there until you until you were ready to go to, on to your master's. So you worked on your master's while while going to work at a library. So they really want someone that's been involved, very ensconced in the library. Now, if I was able to do when I started my my library studies, I was volunteering at my local library, even helping them. I helped with their move with their move in the sense as a civil civilian could do. Um, I volunteered for that huge. We call it was like the we we helped move the books instead of having moving vans because they couldn't afford it. I was part, we did a chain a book chain where we carried all these books. It was great. It was a lot of fun. So I got involved in that. But my studies, I was working part time because I I wasn't I I didn't have support. I didn't have support. I yes, I lived at home, but that was the most support I got because I'm an adult and most adults either you know, they have to pay the bills. So I had to pay the bills. I had to pay for school. I had to figure out how I was going how I was going to pay for books, for for the tuition, the the supplies, everything. And um most of it went on my credit card. Um the others went to I had a grant and I had and I had student loans. How was I going to pay the credit card? I went to work. How was I going to pay for everything else? I went to work. So I worked part time while going to school full time. So volunteering was not an option because, I mean, seriously, like clockwork, I always had a breakdown. I always had a breakdown. For two and a half years, I literally had breakdowns because I had to. I was working, I was going to school full time, making sure I made the deadlines and trying to make, trying to still have the social life and, and then my social life was going to the wayside and my friends were like, what's going on? It's like, I have masters! And so, but the thing is when I had my part time job, it was in law because that's what I did. When I went out of undergraduate, I wanted to go to, to become a lawyer and that wasn't in the stars because I'm not, you know, honestly, law is not for me. Found that out. I got totally, just wasn't it, but that's all I knew. So what did I do? I got a part-time job at a law office. So that's what I had to do. And then when I was, you know, trying to get more experience, I went, I did an internship while working part-time and going to school full-time and still trying to be exciting and fun. So I was a very busy woman and, you know, it, it's so frustrating when people say, well, you don't have experience. Give me, I, why am I paying my student loans if I got all the knowledge? And it's, useless because you wanted me to work at the library already you know even as a library clerk sometimes they want you to have experience I've been looking at the stupid ads and it's like where do you think I'm gonna get it don't mind me so you know that's why I, I think three weeks ago I'm like I can't I can't do this anymore this is I've been trying for a year and a half to get into to the library degree and you either have to like 
basically it's the who who do I sleep with in order to get into the freaking library you know I even tried law libraries even though I'm like ugh. Ugh, ugh, ugh. I still tried and they're like no sorry you don't have a JD it's like really so three weeks ago or a little bit more I just before I knew that I was going to be laid, laid off, I went to a career counselor, I went to a job fair, I talked to the counselor saying, I, at this point, I really don't care if it's a library job, I care whether I like it or not, and I can use my skills, because I, I really want to actually work. I want to work. I really do. I want to work. I want to work hard. I want I want to feel like at the end of the day I did something well. I wasn't feeling that in law. I wasn't feeling that at my position and or at law in general because half the time it's like <sighs> I mean I don't care if it's stressful because life is stress. You're always going to be stressful. I'm looking for a job where I feel like I'm confident and feel like I I enjoy what I do even if I'm stressed. So, um, I've been, I had been revamping my, my resume and I've been networking, talking with people. And I really think the best area, and I blame the professor. He was the one that says, I really think you would do well in human resources. I'm like, really? That's, are you sure? And I've been networking and talking with people and it's, it's actually exactly what I would like to do. It's working with people. Um, it's work using my administrative admin experience, my administrative experience, while also utilizing my people skills. Um, there's training involved, which I've done a lot of project management and training in my past. Um, some uh, one person, one someone was telling me that sometimes you have to be a therapist and you listen to people and you, you know. You know they're venting and you just listen to them and I I I'm very good at listening to people and saying okay well what do you want to do with this and you know I'm a very proactive person I say okay what what do you want me to do and it actually involves you know using my knowledge and not being an assistant you know it's helping people without feeling like I'm your their babysitter you know So I've been working and networking with that, and um, I was told by a lot, like staffing agent. I signed up for a staffing agency. Um, I also talked with a, I've talked with a lot of people, and they said entry levels. It's gonna be a little bit hard because again, I'm going from one industry to another, so I don't have direct experience but I have a lot of soft I have an extremely amount good amount of soft skills it's just phrasing it well and putting it out there and saying you know being able to convince people look this is what I have I know it will work really well so it's framing the resume just right and basically just being my own advocate um, so I have an interview on um, Monday with a re with a staffing agency not to be their client but to be a recruiter so we'll see how it goes it's actually in the salary range that I want because that's the other thing is I really want to just that's why I was looking for another job it's also I want a job that pays a little bit it pays what I'm worth and I'm I'm sorry but I was not being paid what I was worth I was being paid for a 20 year old um, which is fine that's how they needed to do and now they have lessons. So, um, you know, I was fortunate to have a job. Now I'm not. So, it's his life. So, <laughs> I, yeah, I have an interview on Monday. So, I'm kind of psyching myself into that, just seeing how that goes. Um, I also talked, my I was able to connect with someone that says, well, it's an HR company. It's an HR company for the HR department. It, it, they do the H, they do the benefits and, and the benefits portion. 
and medical, all that stuff for companies if they can do that, you know, if they don't have the, the, the capabilities. Um, the, the woman I spoke with said that they have some projects. Since I don't have direct experience, this would be a great direct experience. I'm like, okay, fine. It's basically, I, I'm taking it. So, um, that starts on the 12th of May. So I'll be doing, I'll be starting that hopefully. We'll see. Um, next, next week. Um, so I'm, and I, I was, I'm not, I'm not out of my job just yet. Um, my last day is Friday because I, I just, um, so that's what's going on. So wish me luck. Well, by the time I post this, it'll be past my interview. So, um, just, just keep me in your thoughts. I've, I'm really hoping this is this is a good stepping stone to move on and to get myself out just to get myself out and done with it all so we'll see we'll see where this goes um but this doesn't affect the podcast i've already it doesn't cost me much to do this anymore so there's nothing to worry about i'm still recording and yeah that's about it. That's it. You can find me on Twitter at, as J underscore crafty underscore geek. You can find me on Instagram as J crafty geek. That's it. Just J crafty geek. You can find me on Ravelry as Knitterly Book Lady. If you friend me, I'll friend you back. That's just how it goes. Um, we do have a Ravelry group for the Knitty Digit podcast. Um, it's quiet, but that's where I post announcements or I let you know, warning, there may not be an episode or, hey, there's an episode. Yay, check me out. You know, that sort of thing. Um, but it's pretty quiet. It, it's good announcements, but if you want to start discussions, keep I'm up for that. I am always up for that. Um, you can find, well, you can find the videos if you haven't found it already on YouTube. You can find it on the on my blog, nittydigits.blogspot.com. I haven't been doing show notes. Meh. Um, and I think that's about it. Thanks, you guys. I hope you have a great springy rest of your day, springy week, great May. Oh, it's May 4th. May the 4th be with you. It's Star Wars Day. I'm going to watch Eureka. Ha! Um, because we already watched Star Wars last Sunday. Because that's what the professor wanted to do. So, anyway. You have a great day. Bye.